Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I'm going to discuss this 12D DCG in this video. And to start, we just start with the calculation of the heart rate, and which is almost 38 beats per minute. And then for the axis, uh, we look at lead one and AVF. Uh, that is left axis deviation and up next uh, let us try to locate the p wave the pr interval and the morphology of the qrs complex so if we just focus especially in the rhythm strip or even in the other leads as well we cannot find a p wave rather there are fibrillatory waves present just after the T wave so there is no P wave that actually means that the patient is having atrial fibrillation but what about the QRS complex morphology and the rhythm of the QRS or the rhythm of the heart is it regular or irregular so it's evident that the qrs complex is broad and it's more than 120 milliseconds it's almost uh, 125 to 130 milliseconds wide and there is regular rr interval so as we know that in atrial fibrillation uh, the heart rate, heart rate or the QRS complex uh, rate the rhythm is uh, irregularly irregular but here it's regular so what does that actually mean it actually means that the patient is having atrial fibrillation but along with atrial fibrillation the patient is having third degree heart block or complete heart block or AV dissociation as well. So this is an ECG of atrial fibrillation plus third degree heart block. So, and as the QRS complexes are wide, so this indicates the escape pacemaker is located on the lower portion of the his Purkinje system. In case of a complete heart block, if the QRS complexes are narrow, it actually means uh, the escape pacemaker is loc located in the upper portion of the his Purkinje system. This is an additional information. So, this was all about today's ECG. Thank you very much.